Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 18th of January 2021 and the time has just gone 11.17 GMT. And it's been a fairly muted and quiet start to the European trading session. Um, not too dissimilar to what we saw at the back end of last week. Um, at the back end of last week, uh, we heard from President-elect Joe Biden, who announced the $1.9 trillion uh, coronavirus relief package uh, to kind of reinvigorate the U.S. economy. Now, that was that was basically the talk of the town for the past couple of weeks. About a week and a half ago, we saw multi-month highs or even all-time highs racked up uh, on global stock markets in anticipation of that announcement from Mr. Biden, which was delivered um, at, the back, at the very back end of last week. And now that that's out of the way, the you know, traders are kind of a bit more, uh, are a bit more kind of downbeat, not overly aggressive, but it's just a bit more downbeat because everyone was looking forward to the big announcement. The big announcement has come and gone, and now people are looking around and going, what's next on the horizon? And for the time being, there's nothing really overtly sticking out as, oh, this is the next big positive thing that's going to kind of push markets along. Traders are looking around and going, with well, the health crisis Many countries around the world, many European nations and, and, and others uh, are dealing with a, a, a kind of worsening health crisis. There are concerns that we're going uh, that we're going to have an extension or an, an addition to tougher lockdowns uh, in very different countries around the world. Uh, on top of that, there are you know supply uh, constraint issues in relation to the rolling out of the vaccine, um, in, in terms of the speed at which that's going to be delivered. But that being said. Um, equity markets in Europe are a bit mixed. They were a bit, they were a bit lower this morning. They're now a small bit higher. Um, it's almost like traders know full well the health crisis is an issue. The vaccination process is going to be slow. Governments at the central central banks have a long history of throwing money at the problem. So that's why we're, we're not seeing aggressive sell-offs. We're just seeing this kind of sort of sort of sub, subdued um, subdued mood. Um, so and on, on top of that. Uh, to volatility uh, for the rest of today's session uh, all across Europe and commodities and currencies is likely to be quite low because the, the U.S. is on holidays today. The U.S. was celebrating Dr. Martin, uh, Dr. Martin Luther, Luther King Jr. Day today, uh, so volatility is probably going to be quite low across the board. Now, what I'll do is, as always, I'll run through uh, the major the week ahead, the major economic and corporate stories of the week, and then take a look at the big indices, currency pairs, and commodities. So the weekend article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under, 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 under insights, and then from there, latest news and analysis. Uh, first off the, off the bat, uh, we had, well, it was announced overnight, uh, we had some mixed figures out of China. Uh, the Q4 growth numbers um, were, were better than expected, and they showed an improvement on the previous update. But the retail sales, uh, not, only, not only did it miss economists' forecast, it also declined. It also uh, declined on the previous update. So, it seems to me that a lot of the growth being driven out of China is driven by the fact that a huge, a large number of the kind of um, commercial sector in China is controlled or influenced by the Beijing authorities. So, we have seen strong manufacturing or industrial numbers out of China. It's, it's likely that that has been driven by the state-controlled businesses or state-influenced businesses. Whereas retail sales is all about private individual, and there hasn't still hasn't yet returned to the levels we saw this time last year. So that's something to watch out for, and which could trickle through, to back back, which could um, trickle down to the sales of European brands, which we'll touch on in a bit. Um, tomorrow we'll continue with the uh, U.S. reporting season. Uh, Goldman Sachs and Bank of America will have fourth quarter numbers out. We had a couple of, we had a few big U.S. banks reporting at the back end of last week. J.P. Morgan was 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 uh, was, was, it, was the um, probably the, the biggest biggest of the group. Um, what to watch out for in relation to U.S. banks? Um, the the reserves in relation to bad debts, provision for bad debts, they seem to be rolling back on that. So it does give, there was the impression that the money is set aside for the provision of bad debts because of the pandemic. It now seems that things aren't as going to, aren't as going to be as bad as initially projected. So we'll see, see, see what's happening in relation to the release of reserves connected to potential credit losses. 
uh, looking ahead, um, fourth quarter numbers off Netflix, been a very popular stock, well, full stock, but particularly during lockdown, especially now that uh, further parts of the world are, are, um, are essentially, people are being essentially being, uh, some, you know, advised to stay at home. Keep an eye out for the rate at which it's attracting new paid subscribers in both the US but also around the world. So the international component will be quite important. Also keep an eye out for any production uh, updates in relation to Netflix because some of the, some of the lockdowns are likely to get impact uh, their programming schedule in terms of churning out new content. Burberry, the um, have their important numbers coming out, the UK based fashion house. They have done quite well out of Asia in recent months, particularly mainland China. And this is what I mean about if people in mainland China aren't going out spending a whole lot, that's likely to have a trickle-down impact uh, on well-known uh, Western luxury brands, including Burberry. Uh, Dixon's Carphone, they'll have Q Q3 numbers coming out on Wednesday. This will be, this will be of importance because let's face it, uh, items for home offices or even Christmas presents like electronic goods um, are likely to be in high demand. Uh, so keep an eye out for how, how that performed over the all, you know, that, that time frame would include the all important uh, Christmas period, which is a very popular shopping period as we know. Uh, UK and uh, Eurozone CPI numbers are going to be out uh, on Wednesday. That's going to give us a gauge for demand. To be honest, demand is, is relatively low uh, for, for the time being. It's likely, likely to remain low given the kind of lockdowns experienced all over Europe. Uh, President-elect Joe Biden uh, will be inaugurated uh, as the US President uh, on Wednesday. Keep an eye out for um, any kind of um, political rumblings or any kind of potential protests or potentially civil disturbances like you saw at the Capitol building uh, not too long ago. But I'd imagine that the US um, um, police forces and National Guards and what have you are going to be out in full force. Uh, Thursday, we have this uh, European... Uh, European Central Bank interest rate decisions the meeting. Highly unlikely we're going to see any big changes because at the last meeting um, we had an update um, to the kind of bond buying scheme that was increased uh, by five um, that was increased by 500 billion euros. So if we had a, we had a change of policy last month, it's unlikely we're, we're going to see a change of policy this month. Um, looking ahead to um, Friday, uh, we're going to have the flash PMI updates out of Germany and France. Covering you know manufacturing and services, giving it gives an indicator of how things how things fared out uh, in the month of January in line of the lockdowns, uh, and uh, we have an update from UK public public finances covering December. Um, obviously in relation to national debt, how has that fared in light of uh, what's going on with the extension of furlough and the various different schemes to support the economy during the uh, during the lockdown, and then lastly. Keep an eye for UK retail sales covering the month of December. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a very important uh, shopping month. Um, so traders will be looking at what was demand actually like in the month of December. So turning our attention to the FTSE 100 starting off, as per usual, I'll run through the big indices, the big currency pairs, and the big commodities. So the FTSE 100, uh, over a week ago, uh, racked up a 10-month high, but ever since then, it has been drifting a bit lower. But let's not forget, the broader upper trend is still very much in, intact. Uh, and if we continue to kind of press on higher from here, if the wider upper trend continues, we can then be looking heading up toward the kind of the 7,000 mark because we're currently in around 6,731. And if you press on higher from here, and if we retake the highs of early March in at 6,800. And 91, we could then we could then be looking heading up towards 7,000, uh, big psychological number uh, for the FTSE 100. Uh, if we do manage to drift a bit lower from here, we could see support coming into play from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, uh, in at 6,490. And if you notice how we saw that metric acted as both, you know, both support and resistance not that long ago. And if a metric has been, has been of, of importance in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future. But there are no guarantees. Now, one of the things I do want to talk about on this particular chart is the long wick that was, that was um, on the candle from Thursday the 7th of January. Now, what I want to talk about it is a long wick generally denotes indecision. And we can see here that on Wednesday the 6th of January, market at a very bullish candle it pushed up very aggressively on the 7th it managed to push higher yet again but if you notice how there's a very long wick on the candle and if you notice that at the the opening level of the candle is quite similar to the closing level of the candle so 
it's not a massive surprise that we have a long week in this candle here, the notes and decision, we we'll come from a quite a bullish trend or a, bullish, a recent bullish run, and then we drift a bit lower from here. So sometimes um, this, this sort of this sort of candle, this, this sort of candle formation can appear uh, on uh, on charts, and it is worth taking note of. So the, the logic often behind that is the market has a very bullish run. It, go, it goes on to kind of uh, eke out another, in this case, multi-month high. That high is achieved, but that the buy momentum quickly fades. Not to say that the market completely turns around, but I'm just saying that after seeing a long week like that, it's not entirely a surprise we didn't see a drift to the downside. So it's so, something to keep an eye out for when you're looking at charting in general. Take a look at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. So the DAX, in a similar situation, um, just over a week ago, hit an all-time high, so it's really very much in a, in a bullish trend. You can see that it's been aggressively moving higher since uh, since late no, since late October. It's been move, 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 moving higher, similar to what we saw in the FTSE after the, the new well, the multi-month high was achieved in the FTSE after the new all-time high was achieved on the DAX. We're drifting a bit lower, um, but the upward trend still remains intact. If we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting 14,000, big psychological number. If we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the all-time high of being around 14,134. And if we go beyond that, we then be uh, in, in uncharted territory, in, in uncharted waters. And traders will be looking out for levels like 13,000, uh, sorry, 14,200, 300, uh, so on and so forth. Anyway, to the downside uh, on the DAX, could find support from this area here, the lows of late January. Of early, sorry, the lows of early January, rather, in around 13,565. And if you do go below that, support could be found from this blue line here, the 50 day moving average in a 13,419. And similar scenario, notice how that metric acted as both um, resistance and support in the, in the last few months. And similar scenario, if that area, if the metric has been, has been significant in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future. But once again, there are no guarantees. Um, the Dow Jones, not too long ago, racked, out a fre racked up a fresh all-time high. So it's in very much a strong upward trend. Uh, we're, um, index futures are trading today, but the cash equities are not trading today. But ultimately, if the upward trend continues. Uh, if we press the higher from here, we could be looking at retesting 31,000. A move beyond that could take us back up towards the all-time highs. Uh, in around 31,254, and then if you go beyond that, we could be looking towards uh, 30, up towards 31,300, up towards 31,500, so on and so forth. Uh, any pullbacks in the in, in the um, in the Dow Jones could find support from this blue line here, 50-day moving average in a 30,095, and even if if you go below that, we could then be looking heading back down towards this this line here in around. Uh, 29,461, because notice how on a few occasions in late November and also in late December, uh, that zone acted as support. So keep an eye for that area, should we have a fairly sizable pullback in the Dow Jones. Sticking with the US theme, taking a look at what's going on with the S&P 500, similar scenario, an all-time high was racked up um, a couple of Fridays ago, about a week and a half ago. The market has cooled ever so slightly since then, but the wider upper trend is still very much in place. You know, we're currently, um, the S&P 500 is currently trading around 3,768. A move higher from here could take us back up towards 3,800. And then if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the all-time highs in at 3,832. Uh, any kind of pullbacks might find support from this blue line here. The 50-day 50, 50 moving average in at 3,677. A move below that could take us back down toward this zone here, which is in around 3,600. And it's similar to what we saw in the Dow Jones, the lows of late November and the lows of late December as well. So keep an eye out for 3,600 should we see a fairly sizable uh, pullback on the S&P 500. Um, keep uh, turning our attention now to what's going on in the currency markets. First things first, I'll talk about the kind of the rebound uh, in the uh, in the U.S. dollar. Uh, one of some of the products that we trade here at CMC Markets are forex indices. So that this they have a similar uh, similar structure to stock market indices. Uh, but actually, it is uh, currencies that that that, that were that um, that we're looking into. 
So if you take a look at the CMC GBP, uh, CMC USD, USD index, we can see here the broad trend in the, in the US dollar has been to the downside, but we have seen a rebound uh, recently. And we're now at the point where traders are wondering, is this just a pullback in the wider downward trend? Are we going to turn over on ourselves yet again? Or is this going to be is this going to be the turnaround, which is the kind of first step in a broader recovery in the US dollar? So remember how I talked about uh, we saw that long, uh, relatively long wick on the FTSE 100 when they hit a 10-month high. Notice how we saw here uh, a, 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 long, a relatively long wick, a longish wick um, on the um, US on the CMC US dollar index here. So we've had it's moved to a new, you know, two and a half year low. You know, new lows were achieved. Then what do we see? We see a rebound. We have a pullback here. It seems to define its support here. We're moving higher yet again. So if we do move higher. In the CMC USD index, we could be looking at retesting the highs of late December, and if we move beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up towards the highs of early December. Now, so the, the, the theme that I want, want to talk about here is that we've had dollar weakness, we've had a dollar rebound. How's that going to impact pound dollar and euro dollar? So, broadly speaking, we've seen a correction in the in the uh, in the US dollar recently. So, conversely, we've seen weakness in GBP USD and weakness in uh, euro dollar as well. So I'll take a look at euro dollar now. On the flip side of the divide, we have you know we're, we're at levels over seen about two and a half years ago uh, in the in, in early January. We've been moving lower since because of the rebound in, in the dollar. Let's not forget the, the broader uptrend is still in place, but we're coming up to a fairly significant level because we're currently in at one spot 2072. We're not too far away from the 50-day moving average's blue line here, which is active support uh, back in November. If you can hold above the 50 moving average, it's likely we could see the broader upward trend continue. And should that be the case, we can head back towards one spot 22, and then we could be looking at retesting the highs of early January in around one spot 2349. But if we do move below the 50 moving average, which comes into play in at one spot 2072, we could then be heading back down towards 120, one spot 20, next kind of big psychological number. And a move below that could take us back down toward this zone here, the lows of late November and early December in at one spot 1923, a general area. Now turning our attention to pound dollar. So pound dollar has been in a fairly strong upward trend uh, the last few week, weeks and months. In fact, it was only very recently that it hit. Excuse me. It was only very recently it hit a fresh two and a half year high. So the market's in a pretty strong upward trend. And we're currently in at one spot, trending around one spot, 35.53. If we continue to move on higher from here, we could be looking at heading towards this general zone um, in around the highs. Of, all, of late August 2018, uh, are in at one spot 37.92, but also keep an eye out for the kind of the lows of February 2018 in around one spot 37.12. So it, there hasn't, you know, we saw a lot of volatility in this time frame here. So there isn't a huge amount of kind of areas that really stand out. Uh, so we could be looking at we could be looking at, at the zone of one spot 37.12, the lows of February 2018. We could also be looking up toward the highs of April 2018 in around one spot. Sorry, the highs of late April 2018 in at one spot 37.92. But ultimately, these levels uh, that that zone is just potentially going to be. Um, a possible stop off point as the market moves in the direction of one spot 40 should the kind of broader upward trend continue. If we do see a pullback in pound dollar, we could see support coming to play from this blue line here, <coughs> excuse me, the fifth of the moving average in at one spot 34 uh, 17. And notice on, it, on a couple of occasions, only in December, it acted nicely as support. So keep an eye on that area. And even if you go below that, we could find support coming to play from the yellow line here, uh, the 100 moving average uh, just north of one spot 32. Coming up on to commodities, starting off with gold, um, we talked about the rebound in the US dollar. And gold, like other commodities, is, is traded in US dollars. But the inverse relationship between gold and the dollar has been particularly strong recently. So we talked about the, the move lower. In the, in the move 
higher. The, the recent kind of rebound in the US dollar, well, it's no real surprise we're seeing weakness in the gold market on the back of that. So gold has been moving lower very recently. This candle here is a potential of a long wick to note some decision. The way things are shaping up, given, given the shape of the body of it, particularly if it closes near the high of the day, could be a sign of a hammer formation, which could mean we could be in for a, a turnaround in gold because it got close to 1800, didn't quite get there. So we could be looking at rebounding back up towards the 100 day moving average. This is the other line here in at 1887. A move beyond that could take us towards 1900. And if you take out 1900, we could then potentially look to kind of retest the highs of early January. If you do on the other hand, manage to turn over on itself. If you take out 1800, you could look at heading back down towards the lows of late November in around 1764. And then if you go beyond that, uh, we could then be looking at heading further back, further down, further uh, losses could be on the agenda. Okay, so if you take out, um, if you take out the lows of late November, we could then be looking at heading back down towards the lows of late June in at 1747. Now, lastly, coming on to Brent oil, coming to the oil market, Brent crude oil. The cash market, overall kind of bullish feeling in the markets, um, supply concerns has all kind of been a, been a factor in pushing up oil um, to basically an 11 month high, levels last seen in February uh, 2020. Um, we have seen a bit of a drift lower uh, in the overall oil market. China concerns about certain areas, areas of China, China um, are, are coming under lockdown. Pro prolonged fears about the rate at which the lockdown is going to last. Concerns that the COVID-19 vaccine isn't going to get rolled out quick enough. That's going to chip away at demand. But also, if you've come off 11 month high, a bit of profit taking, it's hardly a bit of a surprise. So the, the broad trend for the last few months has been at the upside. We're currently trading just north of $35 a barrel. If the uptrend continues, traders will be keeping an eye on the kind of the next big psychological number, 60 bucks a barrel. If we do drift lower from here, support could, could come into play from the kind of general 52 zone, uh, 52 dollar zone. Notice how just well north of it, up around uh, 50, 52 spot 43 acted as a resistance on the way up. So a bit of consolidation. You know, we saw some price action take place in around 52 there, there about in late December. Uh, and if you go below 52. We could find support in this blue line here, the fifth of the moving average. I could nicely support um, in mid November and also as resistance in October. And if you go below that again, we could be heading back down towards 46.81, the lows of early December. Uh, that's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.